Hey, I'm Paula. Welcome to How to Make Dinner. Today I'm making this thing. <laughs> That's what it is, though, isn't it? And it's really easy. It's so easy, you probably don't even need to watch a video about it, but you might as well, because you're here. All right, so we've arrived at our third installment of our leftover mashed potato series. And this one, I've saved the easiest one for last. It's basically a non-recipe. It's just a bunch of stuff in your fridge fried up with mashed potatoes. And you know, there's a couple of tips and tricks to pay attention to along the way. So I'll share those with you and yeah, we'll make this together. It'll be great. So it's called Mr. McGregor, which is short for Mr. McGregor's Rubbish Heap which you, may, you might know from the Beatrix Potter books, Peter Rabbit. So I've got a pan here on what's supposed to be medium heat, but this burner likes to kind of just do whatever it wants. So it's a little on the hot side. We're getting a little smoke, but I'm just gonna do my best here. So all you need for this is leftover mashed potato and then just whatever crap you dig out of your fridge that's still edible. So I found some kale in my fridge. I'm gonna use some of that. This is like black kale. This is from, I was using this last week or was it last week? <laughs> yeah, last week for the uh, gnocchi episode. So if you missed that one, you should go back and watch it because gnocchi is so easy and so fun to make. And we made a couple different versions last week. So I've got some kale. I'm gonna chuck that in. That's too hot, it's too hot. I also have some radishes, which you might think is kind of a weird thing to cook, but they're actually great cooked. And they kind of mellow out, their flavor kind of mellows out. And they're just sort of, I mean, these ones have been sitting in the fridge for way too long and it's just time for them to go. So they're going in here. And those will be really nice. And you kind of just want to put things in the pan in the order that they'll cook. So if you have anything that's like really hard or takes a long time to cook, then you want to put that in to the pan earlier. See, the pan's nice and it's fine now. It's, everything's under control. And as usual, salt at every stage. And that stuff's going. I also dug up, well, this might be kind of weird to you guys. I dug up some leftover deli meat. <laughs> this happens to be uh, smoked turkey. And there's like one slice. So it's not even enough for a sandwich, but I don't see anything wrong with just chopping it up and shoving it in here. So this is a great way for to use up um, leftover mashed potatoes, yes, but especially after like a, a turkey dinner because bits of turkey like dark meat turkey in here and even some crumbled up stuffing is so nice in this so this deli meat turkey just kind of reminded me of that so that's going in um, i'm putting garlic in now because the pan's cooled down a bit i didn't want to burn it by putting it in at the beginning you could literally put anything in here it's almost like there's no point in even making a video about it but i wanted to anyway um, you can put carrots in here, you can put peas, frozen peas, um, any vegetables, any scraps of meat. There's really no limit. Cabbage is nice. So if you had cabbage in there, that would basically be like bubble and squeak. And I think it's because of the noise that it makes that it's called that. And so this is making the same noise. That popping, squeaking noise. All right, so I think that's it for this stage. I'm just gonna, once these have softened down a bit, I'm gonna add the potato. So this is leftover mashed potato and it's pretty roughly mashed. I might just go in with all of it. And the trick here is to just kind of press it into a big pancake. It's not going to stay like this, but it's a good way to get good contact in the early stages 
so that you get good browning, which is the goal. You want a nice crispy edged kind of thing. And you can hear there's no more, no more sizzling because the potatoes cooled the pan right down. And I'm just going to chop up a couple other bits and pieces that are going to go in at the end, which is like some fresh parsley and some green onions. I didn't really feel the need to cook those things. So I'll just chop those while we wait for this stuff to get nice and brown. He's a great housekeeper, that Mr. McGregor. He keeps a nice garden and he keeps a nice clean fridge. Okay, so let's see what we have. Okay, so one of the reasons I like using a pan like this rather than a nonstick pan is so that I can really scrape it. So that you can really get underneath because I bet you this is gonna be a nice bit of color on this flip. Yeah, see? That's what we want. Nonstick pan is fine, but you can't really get the, I don't feel like you get as good of a crust. So once you flip it once, we know we're getting some good brown action. Just gonna let it do the same thing on the other side. And if you want to, you totally can keep this pancake shaped and, you know, flip it out and invert it in, in its, in its perfect round shape. But I don't care really at all. So just do whatever you want. Damn it. I might get a little more oil underneath it too, just to make sure we're getting brown, not black. Just kind of work it around. Woo! A little generous on the olive oil there. So it'll just kind of trickle in underneath the edges. Don't take the pan off the induction burner, whatever you do. Oh, this is nice. If you want to flip it out in one big thing, you have to make sure first, you have to give it a little test shake. And if it shakes in a, in a whole piece, then you know you're getting close. You won't you won't be able to do it unless you have a nice, good crust on the other side. I don't know. I haven't decided if I'm going to try it or not. Should I? Should I try it? Probably. The inverted McGregor. I mean, sure. Why not? I'm going to get a bigger plate. Okay. So right after I told you, I don't care about the perfect round. I'm going to just do it anyway. Cause why not? So I'm going to take a big plate, put it over the top and see what happens when I go like this. I hope I don't burn myself with olive oil, which might happen. Ooh, I heard a good thunk. Okay. All right, so I left some of the bits behind, but overall, it's pretty good. And you know what? There's no reason why I can't reincorporate the bits like this. See? No one will ever know except half a dozen people on YouTube, <laughs> except you at home, you'll know. Mr. McGregor, it's a great way to use up leftover mashed potato. Give it a little topper of some fresh herbs, some green onions. Um, zip a little back and forth hot sauce on that thing. Make it a little bit like, ooh, you could put a spicy mayo on it. That would be a little bit like a Japanese style, like. Japanese pancake style. Um, what else? Couple of fried eggs, of course, never are a bad thing. What else did you put on top? Gravy, spoon some gravy over that. I'm just gonna take a little bite here. With like a bit more green onion, cause I love it. You need the fresh. When you're doing like a really cooked pan fried, you know, potato-y heavy thing. I love that freshness. Mm. Perfect. Great. So that's it. So I hope you like this episode. I hope you like my Mr. McGregor and maybe I'll even make it next time you have leftover potato to use up. And, um, thanks so much for joining me. I'm here every Wednesday making dinner, digging around in the fridge 
and um, showing you how to do it too. So please come back and join me again. You could even subscribe if you felt so inclined. <laughs> See you later.